Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a podcast special this week. I'm not joined by John, who is my usual companion in these podcasts. I'm being joined by Alex from Valencia. Alex is a guy that's recently moved to Spain. Well, I say recently, he's been here for now for about six months. And uh, we're going to talk to Alex today about how his first six months in Spain have been. Uh, why he decided to, to pack up and leave his homeland of South Africa and just other things about uh, his life here in Spain so far. So we'll uh, introduce you, Alex. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks for having me here. That's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. And uh, as I said, you've uh, moved from South Africa to Spain. Yeah, indeed. And um, it's, been, it's been a lot easier than I thought it would be um, in, in many senses. Um, maybe that's <laughs> because I, I watched quite a few of your videos before I came along. I think that was the main kind of first thing that I wanted to get my hands into. Just as much material as I could about where that that next step is and, and what it looks like and what things cost and all of those things. So um, I think educating myself quite a bit has helped me sort of manage my expectations a bit more, um, made the process easier. Yeah, And uh, we'll just go through the background of how we... Uh, met I think you got in contact about a year ago was it or maybe longer uh, well yeah it was I think it was just before um, I came to Spain for the first time which was in August 2017 and that was uh, when I happened to yeah just find some of your videos and then I just reached out as I do sometimes and uh, and yeah you were <laughs> you were kind enough to to come back to me which was great and then we had a we had a Skype call, which was cool too. So, and you uh, you came to to Spain to to check it out first to do a bit of groundwork and yeah look for uh, look for a possible place to live and um, you know and uh, check out the possibilities, right? Yeah, that was the idea. I mean, I um I, I'd lived in Cape Town for most of my life, and um I you know I'd started a business and um I just had a had a kid. Uh, he was eighteen months at the time, and so. Um, my fiance and I just wanted something completely different. Um, we didn't want to live in the UK, <laughs> um, and but we also knew we wanted to move away from South Africa, not because of you know anything political or anything like that. It's a beautiful country. It's you know lots lots of stuff going on there, but um, just wanted a change of scene, change of pace. I think the kind of person that likes a challenge, likes things that feel different, and then you've got to ooh, okay acclimatize a little bit towards um, whatever's around you. So. Um, and a big reason as well is because my, my mom is Spanish. So I've got the, got the blood, but not the culture, unfortunately. She, um, she didn't speak Spanish to me when I was growing up. So that's also been an interesting challenge, learning the language almost from the ground up. Um, but it's been fun. So we'll talk about that quickly. So the language aspect. So your mother didn't pass the language on to you, obviously. Uh, so you've had to go on through the process of learning the language from scratch, let's say. And uh, did you start that when you came here or did you decide to get a few months under your belt back in uh, South Africa? It was, um, it, 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 was, it was really, <laughs> it's interesting because um, since I've been here, I haven't actually been for lessons and I've, I've been here for seven months already. So, so I've been a bit naughty on that, on that side. But um, I, I did go to a very, very good um, sort of small school, a Spanish teacher, um, a guy from Alicante, actually, and he had a Spanish school in Cape Town. Uh, and I, I, I did about four months of lessons, which was great. Um, and then I also just started binge watching uh, as, as many Spanish series and movies as I could, you know, just get my hands on. So I went from, you know, Netflix and Narcos uh, to some older sort of Pedro um, Almodovar uh, movies as well uh, which was great not only because they have Penelope Cruz in them which is always you know nice to watch but always um, a bonus <laughs> yeah but um, but it was good to, to, to you know you've got to train your ear that's the thing I've really learned as well you know because the, the, the Spanish that's spoken in Spain is is quite quick it's, it's a lot faster than a lot of the Latin American Spanish and so it's a little bit harder for someone like me to, to, to kind of learn it and to come you know feel comfortable with it so training the ear and just hearing it hearing it all the time um, really helped. Uh, and now, I mean, I can definitely get by now. I can have a bit of a conversation and, and sort of, um, you know, speak to parents at my kid's school if I need to, or kind of, you know, muddle my way through supermarkets, which, yeah, which helps. So yeah, that helped. So you're starting to feel confident with the language? I think so. Well, I think so. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty hard on myself. Like I, I would like to be, um, 
a lot a lot better at it um i think maybe i feel almost like a bit of a self-inflicted pressure because i'm half spanish you know so i, th I feel i should be better uh, i feel it should be more than what, what i've got at the moment but i mean it'll get there you know it's it's only been seven months often my fiance reminds me like yeah you know don't worry it's only seven months in it's not it's not long you know and so um i know that it will come because every day it does feel a bit more confident so it is a long-term sort of thing and has that, um, you know, having that, that, that Spanish blood, let's say, has that uh, made your acceptance there? Do, 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 do you tell people that and do they, do, they, do they seem to make you feel more welcome, do you think? It's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, most of the time, I mean, I almost always, you know, tell people that because it just comes up in conversation. People ask me, you know, where are you from? How did you get here? And then that comes up. You know, my mom is Spanish. Um, my, my grandmother was born in Spanish Morocco in the 1930s and so she's, she's still alive she's still got this sort of strong like Andalusian accent um, even when she speaks English uh, so I, I kind of got a little bit of it from there but um, this yeah that, that, that does come up in conversation and, and when it does I find a lot of Spanish people um, immediately just switch to Spanish <laughs> thinking that okay well why are we speaking English you know uh, which is a good question and so that's kind of when I feel ah oh, damn you know so I'll try and go along a little bit but then I think eventually one of them feels sorry for me and you know just goes back <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, well, that's it. But, uh, you know, uh, pr probably you can um, you can use that to your advantage, I would say. And uh, you chose Valencia. Valencia is the probably the one of the, the cities in vogue at the moment. I think there's a lot of um, publicity towards Valencia. There's a lot of people. Uh, I mean, a lot of the comments that I get on the on my uh, vlogs are people that are looking to come and live in Spain. A lot of them are looking at Valencia. Well, what was the reason that that you decided on Valencia? Was it is that where the, the you said your your grandmother was from Andalusia? Did you have any contact with Valencia or not? Or no, no contact at all. Actually, um, I have a few sort of second and third cousins in Madrid, but that's about it. Like the the sort of extended family, they're, a lot of them are much older than me. I've never really had much contact with them, so they they might be scattered around in other places but I'm, I'm not sure as for Valencia um, it was I, I'd, I'd heard of the place a few times I think I've seen some pictures and I'd seen a few videos here and there um, and also in the past in the past couple of years I've, I've been to Spain once or twice but I've been to Barcelona only so um, you know as, as most people do um, but Valencia didn't come up on the map until this was a real question like where do we go you know okay we're looking into Spain where do we go in Spain you know and so I suppose traditionally people might, you know, go on to the south coast or maybe if you want to kind of get into the city, you look at Madrid and Barcelona and those are fantastic options. But um, especially having been to Barcelona and it's and it's wonderful there. But I think we were also looking at a couple of things like cost of living, you know, didn't want to jump too far away from what we were used to in South Africa, which I mean is is definitely rising in many ways. It's, it's almost directly comparable with what um, we experience, um, you know, in Cape Town, Valencia, it's very, very similar, um, in terms of rent prices and so on. But, um, I think, I think the, the size also appeals to me. So I still, I still kind of like, and I get a little bit of that city vibe. It's nice to kind of feel that they're, that, you know, especially in the, you know, when it's warming up now, there's a lot more people, there's, you know, there's stuff going on every weekend. There's a festival, there's music playing, there's stuff going on, there's fireworks. So you get that, but it still isn't quite, you know, it hasn't quite graduated yet to the size of something like Barcelona or Madrid. Definitely not. Um, so, 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 so something in that like little middle ground was, was very appealing. And then when we came here, um, a lot of that was proven right. Yeah, well, the fireworks aspect, I suppose, you probably noticed that uh, Valencian people like to throw uh, firecrackers around the place. <laughs> I certainly have, yeah. We, 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 were, we went through our first fires uh, in, in March, which was 19 days of that. And um, it's brilliant. It's beautiful. You, I, think, I think a lot of, um, especially the, a lot of the Spanish, they, they just end up, you know, leaving uh, Valencia and they, and they just get out into, into the countryside where it's a bit quieter because, you know, they, they all say, you've got to experience it once, but once you've done that, then you probably won't want to do it again, you know. But, I mean, I... A bit, I really bit like noisy. It. Yeah, it is noisy. It's definitely noisy. But um, when we went into Rusafa, which is one of, the, one of the cool sort of hip areas in Valencia in the, in the center, um, that was amazing, just seeing all the floats and these incredible sort of uh, very stylized 
kind of it's almost like it's come straight from a disney movie or like aladdin very very similar sort of style but so much effort put into each of these installations and massive art pieces uh, it was amazing yeah and everyone's just always really open and, and kind of extra happy and extra friendly there's a buzz in the city during that time so yeah i, I quite like it now you mentioned the cost of living uh, factor because now we'll just set a little bit of the background here regarding work so you've um, you're an established uh, filmmaker, I think. Is it Alex? Is that is that uh, you? You? Yeah, I tried to be. I've got a I've got a video production business. Yeah, for for companies and businesses. And you had that set up in South Africa. Actually, there's a video online where you explain how you made the transition from uh, from uh, South Africa to Spain. But you but basically you've you've brought your business with you, basically, right? That's it. Yeah. So so the business is about two and a half years old, and I've got a partner in Cape Town who's who's also South African, and um, we've been working very closely together, growing it from the ground up. Pretty much started with a camera and two laptops, and now we've got two full time guys in the office, and it's growing. But then about a year and a half ago, I said to him, "Look, like I'm kind of giving you my long term." notice in a way here you know i'm i i want to i want to move i want to leave south africa i want to live in a different place and that was still when we were kind of deciding on where that would be um and then we we kind of just incorporated into the way that we ran the business so that by the time i left it was yeah, it it felt like a kind of a natural progression of where things are going so yeah, and it's going okay so far. Cool. So you'd classify yourself now, now a, um, a a digital. I don't like this term much, but a digital nomad that you've been able to, uh, you know, to uh, yeah, to to set up. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose. I mean, it's it's um, it's it's still a full time business, so it's a full time role. It's not like I'm a freelancer where I can kind of you know check in from nine till eleven and then you know kind of you know go to the beach for a couple hours. Even though I, I you know, I sometimes do that but um don't tell my partner but um uh yeah it, it's still a full-time role that 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 does require you know my time but i can i can do it from almost anywhere so so yeah i suppose digital nomad yeah <laughs> it's a funny term isn't it and um you're trying to build a, a customer base here in spain as well or are you just going to rely on the south african site so so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm still kind of in a way testing the water so um I've, I've been doing a little bit of work with a company um near the city of arts and sciences museum complex down here um uh they're, they're, they do sort of traveler data and analytics and they're they're really cool and I've, I've done a little bit of work with them um uh a lot of the work still comes in from south africa from existing relationships and just some of the stuff that we're doing there makes sense to keep it there um and there's some work in london that's that i'm kind of slowly growing um, but yeah, I, I don't want to push the, I don't want to push it too hard almost, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to live as well as to work, you know, and, and while things are, are kind of taking their, their natural pace, I don't want to feel like I need to kind of, um, yeah, almost push too hard or knock too hard on that door because, um, definitely felt that there's a, there's a, there's a different philosophy here or a different approach to life here, especially if you compare it to South Africa or even in England or in the United States. It's, um, there's a, you know, life first, then work, um, which I think is a very healthy balance. So you, you, you have noticed that, that there's, there's a different priority when it comes to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and, and I think it's healthy. I, I think it's, I'm not used to it yet. Uh, but that's just because of the way my brain is wired. I'm, I almost think I've I've got to kind of you know take a lesson out of their of their book and and try and adapt it into what I do. But um, definitely a, a, a different cultural wiring. Um, you know that's obviously coming from my English speaking background. But um, I think it's a healthy way of of, of living and working. You know why not? <laughs> Who's on their deathbed wishing they worked more? You know. Well, that that's that's exactly it. Yeah, I think they call it. Uh, uh, I'd say it's a, it's a, probably a stereotype, but it's the Protestant work ethic. Uh, not going into religion backgrounds, but uh, I think that's what they call it. No, that 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 work orientated type of thing. I mean, that's not to say that Spanish people don't work hard. I mean, let's let, let's be honest here. There's, pe there's people doing a hard day's grind here in Spain, but but they sort of manage to uh, to balance it a little bit better. Let's say, yeah, in my opinion, anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's a sense of pride that they approach almost anything, you know. So um, yeah, no, it's really cool. And uh, Valencia was a choice, obviously, because of the. Uh, you said it's not as big as Madrid, Barcelona, but it does have a, a, an airport that can take you everywhere you need to go. You can get to London quickly. Can you get a direct flight back to South Africa from there? Uh, no, not direct. But um, the the first time we came here was via Istanbul. 
uh, and so that was just two flights. Um, so Valencia, Istanbul, Istanbul, Cape Town. Um, I mean, coming from the tip of Africa, we're pretty much used to uh, a sort of a standard nine hour um, you know, anywhere to, you know, whether it's Doha or, um, or in Dubai. Uh, and then and then going to where you need to go. So it's it's a real treat being in Europe to to be able to just be two, three, four, maximum five hours from almost anywhere. Um, yeah, but that, the airport's great. It's only fifteen minutes cab ride away, and um, yeah, never had any problems. Get there fairly quickly. Good. And the uh, the family side. Now you mentioned that you've got um, a young boy, uh, fiance that you've uh, packed up and uh, moved here with. Uh, what was the what was the because I suppose that I mean I don't know your uh, fiance but she doesn't come from that the Spanish background uh, as you do, so uh, so what was the what was the um, the the process like for them as well Was it harder for them Do you think to to adapt or, or is it being harder for them to adapt? Well, um, it's interesting. Like I'm I, I'm a little I'm a little more advanced in the language and advanced is a, is. It's not really the right word there, but but um, I, I'm a bit more comfortable with the language than than she is, Tiffany, my partner, and um, she she also works remotely for a a, a Cape Town based company. She also um, runs yoga retreats and does sort of yoga, nutrition, and mindfulness mainly for um, women who are who are pregnant, so sort of in the prenatal space. Um, and she does it very well and all that. So she's also super busy. And so when you're busy and you're kind of, you know, your plate is already 90% full, plus you move to another area or another, you know, part of the world. Um, is, is, I think sometimes that, that, um, that lead time that you have to, you know, being, you know, having that feeling of being completely settled just takes longer. You know, for example, if we were um, both, you know, going for a Spanish job, then we probably would have had, you know, much more incentive or the need to learn Spanish much more quickly and just get into it and, you know, have Spanish friends and all of that. And and, and we do, we're getting there, but it's just, it just takes a little longer. So, I mean, um, that's on the one side. The other side is that it's also been very comfortable. You know, we've we've had no real problems um, getting a getting a place. Um, we we bought bikes and we cycle around all the time. We don't we don't have a car at, for now at least, but you can certainly make do without a car. Um, so in a way, you can feel like you can kind of get by with with not very much. You know, you can kind of you know just just have the basics down, and already there's a a very decent quality of life. Um, so that's been great. Yeah. So I think, I think for her, it's been fine for my son. Um, I mean, he's young still, he's, he's turned three while, uh, while we have, while we moved here. So, um, he's, he's loved it. You know, he's, he's been at a school. We're going to probably be moving him to a, um, a public school, um, next, uh, next year for September in the next sort of uh, phase. Um, but, but he's loved it. He's made friends. He's super gregarious as well. So it's easy for him to kind of just be thrown into any situation. And, and, um, so yeah, the, the, the change for them has been better than I thought it would be actually, you know, now yeah, lucky. And, um, that point you made there that Valencia is a manageable city that you don't need a car. You can get around fairly easy, that urban type of living, which is probably quite attractive, you know? You've got all of the services you need, all of the services you need probably within a stone's throw of where you live and getting around the city on bikes, probably fairly flat and, you know, really, really manageable. Yeah, uh, it's super flat. So that's that's the one thing. So I'm, I'm used to hills and mountains and hikes, which I sometimes miss. But then, you know, it's, it's, it's about a 20 or 30 minute drive away, just the mountains and the countryside, which is which is incredible. Um, so you've got the two, you know, kinds of, of, of terrain, um, the metro, the buses, the, tr- the trains out of um, out of Valencia to the neighboring cities and so on. Um, are, are really really easy, you know, to access. They're, they're really quick. The service is good. So yeah, no no complaints when it comes to the public sort of infrastructure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 been pretty good. And one thing I I, I really don't like, and I've been told that that <laughs> this is something that just happens in all of Spain, is that while I don't have a pet um, or a dog or a cat, they just aren't fans of picking up their dog poop. Uh, and so. <laughs> And so that's just been something I've had to kind of, you know, dodge the minefield here and there. 
uh, as I've been walking in the streets. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem everywhere. It's uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's a problem. I, I don't know what the mentality is. I mean, I can walk outside where I live here in a residential neighborhood and uh, the, uh, there's a school across the road and uh, the other side of the, um, uh, the, for the other f- s- footpath from opposite the school is just, it's as you said, it's a minefield. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's something that uh, we could we could criticise, obviously. But um, you know, uh, yeah. As long as you don't step in it. Yeah. Well, when you do step in it, you uh, you have a problem, and uh, yeah, especially if you're uh, especially if you're on your way to work. But uh, yeah, the 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 advice is always uh, walk with your head down. That's it. Walk walk with your head down. Yeah. I'm not pessimistic. I'm just being cautious. Yeah. yeah, and the other the other thing is that um, because you don't get a lot of rain. Well, uh, obviously, uh, Val- Valencia is probably similar in that regard. That you can, you know, the summer period coming up, you'll probably get you know four or five months without much rain. And it's not only the dog poop. It's the it's the it's the other um, um, you know it's the it's the it's the piss and all of those things which build up. And the same dogs are doing the same treks every day and. Uh, it, 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 it can get a bit smelly. It can get a bit smelly, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, I picked that up. Unfortunately, there's, there's, there's definitely a bit of a waft. In the mornings, it's nice because in the mornings I go for a run. It's, it's, um, it's still c- kind of quite quiet. There's some people in the Turia that are walking or taking a run as well, and, and that's fine. But sometimes, especially with the heat of the day coming in, then, yeah, there can be a bit of a stench. <laughs> and, and then when you get the, when you get the, uh, the public... Um, <clears throat> fairs and all of those things the human element comes into it as well so because there's a lot of alcohol consumed and not a lot of toilets so that can that can be a problem so the uh adaption to the the new city uh alex how i mean you mentioned the cost of living is fairly similar to what you were experiencing back that back there in cape town so obviously that wasn't you know anything out of the ordinary but but what were the what were the most difficult things to uh to adapt to i mean because you know coming from a country like south africa it's you know probably uh i wouldn't say it's the exact opposite but you know probably probably a lot of differences there are definitely a lot of differences um i would say most of them quite positive um there's there's definitely a feeling of safety um that is that is a lot stronger it's just one one level up, you know, on the on the overall vibe to be able to go out and kind of always feel like you're safe. You don't really have to be looking over your shoulder. Um, I never take that completely for granted, but um, there's 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 definitely an element there that 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 is better than South Africa in terms of adaptation. Like, um, I don't think that there's anything that uh, would be. Uh, specific to the Spanish or, or living in Spain that you maybe wouldn't have found anywhere else, you know, moving to a different place. So, for example, um, you know, the, the kind of the niggly things that are the, the admin, you know, getting your son into school, um, making sure that there's a flat to move into, opening a bank account, um, making your first uh, set of friends, um, you know, knowing where to go, where the closest supermarket is, all of those kind of, you know, settling things that everyone needs to do. I'd say that they were quite easy to do. Um, you know, it's not like we, we went to a, a, a sort of a rural island somewhere. I mean, you've got amenities everywhere you go. So it's, it's quite easy to kind of find that types of uh, those types of things. Um, the, 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 I, I would think, and this is a bit of an extended thing, but actually the only real big problem on my side was something that was, was, um, personal to my situation in, in a sense. So um, because of, of some mix up with um, the consulate in Cape Town that I'd been dealing with for um, a while, um, there's some law in, 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 in Spain that says that w- children of, of Spanish born parents, which is me in my case, because I wasn't born in Spain, but my, my mum was, um, they need to declare that they have an intention to keep their nationality, their Spanish nationality, once they turn 18. And that is a sort of a three-year window until you turn 21 in order to do that. And so I didn't know about this law and this time had expired already. So I'm 28. This happened seven years ago. Uh, and then they told me that actually your nationality had been revoked. And I was like, what? <laughs> I've got a Spanish passport here. I've come here. I've moved here. You know, my son's got a passport. Like, what? what's going on? And so I had to... It, it, I kind of went into a bit of a tailspin because I needed to find information, you know, find out as much as I could because that's how I sort of try and deal with things. I try and just ask questions and get in touch with as many people as possible just to, you know, shed some light on what's going on. 
of course, being at a disadvantage with a language didn't help. So I kind of had to really quickly, you know, train my ear on that and help get other people to help me. But I found that one irritating or sort of difficult area of adapting is that when it comes to some of those official procedures of, of, of kind of getting the real answers and the real information that you need, whether it's moving here or passports or home, aff- you know, not home affairs, but sort of like, um, uh, you know, home, home office or whatever you might call it. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, I, I think people are maybe scared to be seen to be making a decision that they think might uh, kind of come back to them or, you know, might get them in trouble. And so it's easier just to kind of pass that along to the next person along the line. Talking about civil servants. Civil, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're not all like that, but, um, and, and I've certainly met some helpful people on the side, which has been a godsend because um, it was a bit of a, a shock, this whole situation to me. You know, we moved here, we come in good faith, we, you know, I'd moved my life here and suddenly I'm told that I, you know, I'm not Spanish. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm busy in it's sort of in process now of kind of um, sorting that out, but it took a while. And unfortunately, it took a bit of adapting to get used to the fact that it's not just about sorting it out when you want to you've got to play the game you've got to kind of go through the process of sort of their much slower process in my in my opinion that's the that's the key i mean bureaucracy is always going to be the the thing that people are complaining about here in spain i mean there's endless blog posts and endless comments about people having problems with the bureaucracy and uh uh, it, it is surprising because there are a lot of people working in civil services here, you know. So, so everywhere you go, there's a public office. But, but I think you, I think you're right that people people don't want to make a mistake. They don't get paid to to handle um, problems, you know. So, so they'll pass it on to somebody else, or it's somebody else's problem. In fact, uh, in Spanish, there's an expression called um, uh, they that they, they call it a, a marron, like a brown. And basically, it's you know when there's a tricky situation, it gets it gets passed on to somebody, you know. And uh, that that that's common in public sector and private sector, and, and basically everywhere. But but uh, so, what did you do from that point of view, Alex? Did you did, are you here as a as um as a a foreigner then, or are they? Is there some type of transition process or? Yeah, so there's a there's a process called recuperación, uh, which literally means you can you know you can recover your nationality and um, uh, you, yeah you have to kind of hit a couple um, you know requirements. One of them being a resident here for a year. But I've got some cause to try and speed that up, or at least I've got reason for if it ever appeared before a judge or something like that. I've got I've got reason to, or at least a good a good case to try and bring that closer instead of having to wait a whole year which would be another five months the only problem is that it's it, it's a problem of making sure that my birth certificate that they've got in the central registry in, in madrid uh, reflects the same thing that's said in my birth certificate in the consulate in cape town which is where i'm sort of registered as a citizen even though i've moved my empadronamiento here in valencia even so anyway this sort of like triangulate you know triangulization of um all sorts of weird processes is 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 unfortunately still ongoing so i'm I'm kind of consulting with a lawyer at the moment but it's 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 i've been told that look it's going to happen you're fine you know i'm not here illegally or anything like that um unfortunately it also means that i i have to delay my partner's residency process because without me having recovered my nationality i can't get a spanish id number and without that she can't you know get that so that's still a bit of a thing that we're negotiating but um in in a way it affects her more because she she's the one who can't actually travel or leave the country at the moment yeah yeah um but i mean it doesn't affect the day-to-day which is good so i imagine this is because uh, spain doesn't recognize dual nationality with south africa right basically it's it's not so much about well i i don't think it's that um, it's it's more about the fact that South Africa is obviously not part of the the EU and part of the Schengen zone, and so I could come here as a. I actually tried to um, apply for a sort of a, um, uh, you know a a, a a Schengen visa on my South African passport, but they immediately said no. Why you're a Spanish citizen? So, <laughs> so it's a bit of a back and forth. Yeah, I'm kind of told three or four different things by different people, um, but I think if I just I, I learned that if I if I match my sort of level of concern with theirs, then I'll probably be better off. And I think my level of concern was higher than a lot of the people then. Yeah. <laughs> don't get stressed. No, don't get stressed. 
don't get stressed. <laughs> no, I, I, I think at the end of the, I think at the end of the day, nobody's going to kick you out. But uh, it's just, it's just that nobody wants to be living in a, in a clandestine uh, situation. You know. Yeah. Or limbo. You know. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Uh, but but you haven't had a problem to get a bank account. No, no, that's all been fine. Yeah, that's all been okay. Yeah. So 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 that's why it's kind of the thing that all right, if I do have to wait it out, I'll wait it out, you know. Yeah. And uh, didn't have a problem to to sign a, a rental agreement. No. No, we did that immediately. In fact, we were really lucky there. So when it came to finding a place, I'd looked on Idealista, uh, which is fantastic. Um, I, 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 I kind of reached out to a couple local property agents that I found on Facebook and, and just through just kind of digging around a little bit. And, um, and then when, when we came, we made a, yeah, it was actually a good decision we made. We, we originally booked an Airbnb in an area that we kind of liked here um, for two weeks just so that it gave us time to find a place and so that we could, you know, open a bank account and so on. Um, and we, we lined up a couple of viewings and the second place we viewed, we were like, oh, we love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it, we're lucky. Yeah, it's a four bedroom apartment, um, which is certainly more than we, <laughs> we wanted, but it was really good value right next to the Turia Park, the river. Um, great location. Yeah, I'm very happy here. So that was lucky. And what are you, uh, not meaning to get too personal, but what are you, what are you paying for rent there? No, not at all. I pay eight fifty a month. So eight eight fifty for a four bedroom apartment uh, in a good area of Valencia. Very, very good area. Yeah, lovely. So it's it's it's. I can look into El Carmen, which is the the, the kind of the you know the old town. Um, and I'm actually glad that I'm not on that side because it can get quite loud and quite uh, raucous sometimes. So, so on this side, it's, it's a little cheaper, but it's, it's right on the, the river. It's, it's fantastically located. There's a supermarket right across the road. There's a school across the road that I'm planning to send my son to. There's the, um, uh, there's a bus stop here as well. So it's, it's very, very well located. Yeah. Very happy with that. Yeah. A- and I use one of the rooms as an office. In fact, this is the office right now. So it's, it saves me from having to get to a co-working space or something like that. Yes, yes. So you've uh, managed to kill uh, various birds with the one stone there. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Because I, I suppose that you know finding a decent place to rent is always going to be the always going to be the key to immediate happiness, or uh, or not. And uh, you know there, there are some rumours going around. You mentioned that site there, Idealista. I get a lot of comments, people saying that there's a lot of fraud on that site. But you had a, a decent experience with it. Yes. Actually, now that you mention it, um, <laughs> I did have a situation once because I, before I came, I was just sending out mails. I was trying to line up a couple viewings with some private um, landlords. And, and the one time there seemed to be a bit of a fishy exchange of messages. Um, so so I, I do. Yeah. So I think you just have to look out for it. I mean, there you know, there's scammers everywhere, really. Um, but most of the time, it seems to be a site that's run with you know integrity and 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 people want to do honest business on there so yeah and the search functions are really good um in fact i remember um, uh, one of your tips in one of your videos was about making sure that you find a place that um has that exterior so that you know you can make sure you 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 get a bit of sunlight because the way that these spanish apartment blocks are designed there's so many of those that are sort of looking inward in that quadrangle um which is not ideal you know i i need sun so (laughs) yeah so that was good that was a clever tip i learned the hard way yeah basically (laughs) because i i I was also in a hurry to to get a place and you know looking for somewhere that fell into my budget back in the day and um, that was one of the only options that i have and certainly not a good place to uh to be creative i'll tell you when you're looking at an interior patio on a patio on a ground floor but uh, with all of the stuff that falls from above as well. So, uh, and neighbors and furniture and yeah, an interesting experience. Yeah, neighbors, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot the uh, Spanish people are very uh, communicative as well. They like to have the uh, interior patio conversations uh, where uh, neighbors are yelling out from one side to the other. That seems to be a fairly common thing here as well. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard quite a few of those yeah <laughs> that's it just the way just the way the country works i think in that sense so uh, so yeah so um uh seven months you said so seven or eight months so uh, everything been positive so far yeah it's been good it's been very good i mean um we we take walks every day into the into the park and i mean the days are getting longer now so you know it's half past eight nine o'clock and it feels like it could be four or five in the day so that's beautiful um 
and and summer's coming up so it's it's actually been two winters in a row for us because we left Cape Town just at the end of the winter in October last year and we kind of went into the winter here and so we're we're yeah we're ready for some solid beach time um but uh but yeah most of the time it's been pretty good i think we have a decent quality of life here um and aside from a couple sort of little niggly elements um i think we're quite happy you know i think um it's it's definitely the kind of place that that you can feel you can you can if i was sort of you know 60 or 65 or something like that i could definitely see myself wanting to retire to maybe a little bit outside of valencia where it's um a, a bit more mountainous and um you know you've got a bit more space and you can kind of have um you know possibly a, a, a couple options with houses or gardens or whatever the case may be um so it does give you the feeling that that it's 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 sort of you know quite sort of stable and safe and um um you know but i think when you go closer to the center then you then there is a bit of a bustling city that i think in the next sort of decade or so maybe even sooner it'll it'll keep growing you know it's definitely a place that's on the up um in fact when i was coming back from london a couple of weeks ago i saw a massive uh, billboard um in stansted airport that said uh, and it was a picture of the arts, arts city of arts and sciences or one of the landmarks in valencia i can't remember which but it said in massive writing make sure you get to valencia before it get becomes the new thing um yeah so um i think that's that's your answer right there well valencia valencia was um it was the how would i say how, how can i say this valencia was the the epicenter of the corruption a few years ago and um i didn't know that you didn't know that no uh it, i think it was uh, one of the i think all of the politicians that were running the country 10 years ago are now in jail or i think some of them have died and um it it, it was one of those places where uh, corruption was at its peak and there were a lot of uh, because they had a, a Formula One race there for a while, and that was that was a bit um, a bit dodgy. Uh, that uh, arts and science uh, museum, the money that they invested to build that, and all of those type of things, and the, and the city seriously in debt. The city seriously in debt. But uh, oh, I can imagine. But uh, yeah, that doesn't affect your day to day. I don't think it's it's no. And and I mean, I'm coming from um, a country where, despite. Um, a lot of a lot of good people and a lot of good things happening and and a lot of beauty um there's certainly a lot of systemic corruption in south africa as well i think in in similar order so um yeah maybe for me that wasn't something that i'd, I'd noticed right away i think it's um I, I i think it's just i think it's a problem everywhere i don't think it's a, a problem that's that's unique to any country i think it's just the way humans are and if and if we get the opportunity to do it a lot of people do that's it well yeah absolutely and yeah, there's an insatiable need to to get ahead or to you know yeah if you can get away with it then ah let's have a go so yeah it's not surprising that's it yeah. that's it if you can get away with it that is the key that's the key thing now uh anything that um uh, when it comes to uh food and all of those things anything that uh, was a bit uh, difficult to get used to did you did you adapt to the tapas culture the, the spanish way of life yeah i mean that's that's quite easy to adapt to i think um cuz you know it's um i think you can definitely find um you know the good restaurants and then the restaurants that are like you know they're okay but maybe i won't go there again um <laughs> Uh, and but most of them are quite cheap and quite good. I mean, for us, we're we're vegetarian, um, and so or at least we're pescatarian. That's the that's the word. So um, a lot of people have kind of been mocking me because you know what what the hell were you doing moving to Spain? You know where you know the pretty much the national export um, or at least one of them is 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 sort of world class meat and and pork and salchicha and well pork is the pork is the number one that's it yeah yeah exactly so so um i knew what i was getting into and when i was a kid i did try it and i knew that i'd enjoyed it so um but um in terms of vegetarian options and and options where you don't always want something meat based or uh, whether you're vegetarian or not you you can definitely find it i think there's still a bit of a way to go so when it comes to for example really good thai food um or um uh, really good chinese or maybe a couple other sort of like you know um sort of famous cuisines but done right done really really well um there aren't that many options or at least if you do find it it's 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 probably going to cost you a pretty penny so i think in 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 other cities you're probably you know it's 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 probably easier to find that in madrid or barcelona um but at the same time yeah no we don't eat spanish food that often i mean i quite i quite like paella 
or Aroth, as they call it here. Um, but uh, I, th- I think after you've kind of had tapas a couple of times, especially when you first move in and you sort of like, you know, you have it six or seven days in a row, you're like, okay, let's try something else. <laughs> mm. But once in a while, it's, it's great. It's delicious, yeah, especially if you know where to go. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, good. I think we'll uh, start to wrap up. Alex, we've been going for about uh, 40 plus minutes, so it's been good to have a chat. Time flies. I've got to move on and do something now at about 11 o'clock that I've got to get ready for, but uh, it's been good speaking to you. And you said that you're in Madrid in the next few weeks? Yes, yes. Uh, I, ironically, it's probably because I, um, I'm, I'm going to be having an appointment with someone who will help me with my, my situation, my recuperación. So, um, yeah, it seems that all roads lead to Madrid on that one. Um, so, so yeah, probably will be in the next few few weeks. Well, if you need uh, if you need uh, a good lawyer that can take care of that for you, I uh, I know a guy that does uh, who specialises in that type of thing. So let me know if your guy doesn't work out, and uh, maybe we can catch up for a coffee if you're on your way through. For sure, absolutely. Thanks so much, Stuart. Yeah, and thanks for your help over the over the years as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries, no worries, no worries. So uh, we'll start to wrap up. So uh, questions or comments, leave them in the section below. I'll thank Alex for his participation here today. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll see you all in the next podcast. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.